Good morning, everybody. Very sorry I was back there talking. Imagine that. I've been asked by Jay to uh, help with the morning hymn, and uh, so if you'll all stand, those of you who are sitting, some of you are standing already. Jay, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has see anybody over here so I'll just just go right straight to what I have which are not a whole lot um, kind of some updates uh, if you see in the bulletin uh, the Dorcas and Naomi circles will not be meeting in July and also the property uh, meeting will not be happening tomorrow night if it's listed in there I don't know who the guy's supposed to turn that in didn't get it done but uh, it might have not got done, but no property meeting tomorrow night. Now, the Rebecca Circle meeting uh, for Tuesday, July 2nd at 11 a.m., that is a pitch-in that will be going on. It will be in the fellowship hall. Uh, please wear red, white, and blue. Now, I'm not sure why that would be, but uh, please wear red, white, and blue. Actually, I know why that is. Do that. Um, other announcements, that may be it. That may be a record low on announcements. So, Jay?
Please join me in the call to worship. And stand if you're able. Come, give thanks to the Lord with all your heart and soul. We come rejoicing over God's many blessings poured out on us. God's works are great. We delight in learning about them. Respect for God and all that God offers to us is the beginning of wisdom. With gratefulness, we shall praise and honor all our lives. Please join in the opening hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness, on the screens, or number 86. Please join me in the invocation. Bless and heal us, O God, for we are struck in, in body and in spirit. As we stretch out our hands to touch the hem of your robe, make us well. Course through our minds and bodies with your healing power as we place our faith in your mighty spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
I've seen love come and I've seen love walk away. So many questions. Will anybody stay? It's been a hard year. So many nights with tears all of the darkness trying to fight my fears. Alone, so long, alone. I'm sorry. <laughs> This is a song that's a... that's helped me get through a very difficult year. Okay, I'd like to start over. I've seen love come and I've seen love walk away. So many questions, so many bodies stay. It's been a hard year, so many nights in tears, all of the darkness. I'm trying to fight my fears Alone, so long, alone I don't know who I'd be if I didn't have you I'd probably fall off the edge I don't know where I'd go if you ever let go, so keep me held in your hands. I've started breathing. The weight is lifted here with you. It's easy when you are by my side. There's nothing missing when you are by my side. I took the long road, but now I realize. That I'm home with you. I'm home. I don't know who I'd be if I didn't know you. I'd probably fall off the edge. I don't know where I'd go if you ever let. Go, so keep me held in your hands. I don't know where I'd go if you ever let go, so keep me held in your hands. You're my safe place, my hideaway. You're my anchor, my saving grace. You're my constant, my steadiness. You're my shelter, my oxygen. I don't know who I'd be if I didn't know. Thank God I do. I don't know who.
who I'd be if I didn't know you, I'd probably fall off the edge. I don't know where I'd go if you ever let go. I don't know who I'd be if I didn't know you. Thank God I do. Let us join together for the morning prayer, followed by the Lord's Prayer. Almighty and ever-present God, we come with willing hearts and minds to be transformed in your presence. Take us today and reshape us into what you will. We are yours, and we submit to you in humility. We commit to remaining on the path of Jesus Christ and ask for your forgiveness of our sins. On this sixth Sunday in Pentecost, keep us mindful of the journey we take in growing deeper in faith, in sharpening our focus on what you have called us to be in this world, in refining our current ministries, and in looking forward to new ministries that express your will for us to grow closer to you and to each other. We pray for those among us, our family members not here, our church members not here, and our friends and neighbors who are challenged with health problems. We pray for peace of mind and rest so they can summon from their own bodies and from your presence their own natural healing power which can work alongside the medical help they seek. We pray for recent deaths of family members. We pray for love and gentleness to serve as the healing balm needed for broken hearts and dashed hopes. Show us how to be present and prayerful as we journey alongside our friends. Bless this church, God, and all the people who have drawn closer because of your powerful and protective presence. Keep us ever faithful and ready to serve in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us now join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Our first scripture reading is from Psalm 30. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help and you have healed me. O Lord, you brought up my soul from Sheol, restored me to life from among those gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you his faithful ones and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. By your favor, O Lord, you had established me as a strong mountain. You hid your face. I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my helper. 
You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O oh Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Our gospel reading comes from Mark chapter 5, verses 21 through 43. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue, named Jairus, came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet, and pleaded with him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from a flow of blood for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had, and she was no better but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his cloak, I will be made well. Immediately her flow of blood stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my cloak? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say who touched me? He looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what, she, what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the synagogue, lead, uh, from the synagogue leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the synagogue leader, Do not be afraid, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the synagogue leader's house, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. Taking her by the hand, he said to her, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, get up. And immediately the girl stood up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. May God bless this reading of God's holy word. As you have just heard, we've been given two fantastic miracle stories that appear to be happening at the same time. Each story has the power to strengthen the other. Whether we compare and contrast these stories or examine them on their own, they prove to us that nothing can keep God's holiness contained. Jesus extends wholeness and blessing even to those who may be considered beyond help. For example, Jairus' daughter was considered dead, and yet he brought her back to life. And the woman who had been bleeding for 12 years, who had suffered financial ruin, humiliation, and loneliness, was healed and brought back into the fold of, as Jesus called her, daughter, restoring her respectability and her sense of communal belonging. None of these many details that have been thrown at us today should really distract us from what matters. We are really just called to stand back in awe and behold what Jesus can accomplish. Many of us already know this. We have witnessed Jesus' amazing power to restore us to wholeness in our own ordinary lives. And we have never been the same again. It would be difficult to calculate how many, how many times Jesus might have restored us, healed us, 
and brought us back into the fold. Many of us might take things for granted, never giving Jesus credit for his restorative work in our lives, thinking it was just chance, or good medicine, or pure luck. But you can tell by their actions those who might have had an encounter with Jesus. They feel compelled to act. Something has been released in them, motivating them to begin their own ministries, always trying to do for others what Jesus has done for them. He has changed their lives. A personal encounter with Jesus is incomplete without discipleship. In this season of Pentecost, we are supposed to focus on growth in discipleship. We as church have the summer months in which to evaluate how our past and current ministries are doing. We might even be inspired to move in a new direction based on the gifts that we have among us. As a fairly new pastor in your midst, I'm always surprised when people say they've never thought of doing things a little differently in their ministry. They've been faithfully doing what they set out to do in the beginning. They've never looked at their ministries in, to marvel at how Jesus is present in their work, always inspiring, inspiring them to follow his example, to tweak their ministries every now and then so that they come alive. No matter what new ministries we might decide to initiate, we can count on Jesus to inspire us by how he ministered during his lifetime. We are the vehicle by, by which we continue Jesus' ongoing ministry to this world. We must keep watching for him and his amazing capacity to fill us with passion for the work we do. I'm going to lift three points from today's sermon that might be helpful for us. If we took today's reading and look for inspiration, we'll notice, one, Jesus was never in one place for a long time. He crossed geographical boundaries often. He crossed cultural and social borders as well. In what ways might we feel called to offer God's healing, restorative work beyond our accepted confines? How might Jesus inform us when you think of this? In what unconventional way can we minister to people different from us? One idea that came to my mind, and I'm sure all of you will have your ideas, could we offer foreign language courses here? That's just one example. I'm sure Jesus inspires each one of us according to the gifts we have been given. A second point that crops up in our reading today, Jesus confronts both disease and death. Do we feel called to minister to those in nursing homes or hospice care? Does Jesus' ministry inspire us to minister in some way that's realistic for us? Can we perhaps just send cards to residents who may be hospitalized or living away from their families? What else occurs to you that you can think about? How does Jesus inspire you? And the third point, Jesus extends boundaries of relationships in today's reading. There are many reasons why Jesus should have just kept his distance from the woman with the issue of bleeding. But Jesus wanted to know more about who she was. He wanted her to be restored to society. He even extended respectability to her by calling her daughter. Jesus just keeps on inspiring us. We are in awe of how a small gesture, a simple word from his mouth has the power to change life. He didn't just intend for this unnamed woman to be healed of her bleeding problem. He wanted her to be fully restored to society along with the level of respectability she deserved. Jesus holds a vision of people that is so much bigger and bolder than we feel we are capable of. When Jesus grants a miracle, it is offered in all his grandeur. Jesus does not economize. He gives with his whole heart. How can we feel inspired by this aspect of Jesus? 
Now, we can easily argue that we can only do so much. We have limits on our resources. We aren't all that energetic anymore. But that's what today's scripture reading is about. Jesus blows us away with what he does, which comes from what he believes is possible. He is not, his is not practical down-to-earth thinking. His is heavenly thinking. How do we allow Jesus to inspire us to a heavenly way of thinking? It has something to do with our commitment to our faith. We are called to believe in the possibility of healing when all odds are against us. We are called to accommodate people who are unlike us and who make, may make us feel very uneasy. We are called to welcome the stranger even if our society tells us it's dangerous to. The big question for these summer months just might be, how do we imagine reality as Jesus does in a world that encourages us to secure ourselves first? There's a small part in our reading that just might give us the encouragement we need to stay the course, to keep imagining possibilities. When emissaries returned from Jairus' house to announce that Jairus' daughter had already died, their pronouncement was, she's dead, why worry the teacher any further? This is a perfectly reasonable conclusion in practical earthly terms. But they were discounting the capacity Jesus had to override earthly thinking. How inspiring is this for us? We stop imagining once, once we reach a logical conclusion. Our faith, however, is not based on logical conclusions. Jesus insists on going one step further. Jesus is God among us earthly creatures. He has shattered the boundaries of limited thinking. He inspires us to draw from him in imagining outcomes that border on miracles. We are blessed with such access and freedom. The Gospel writer Mark wants us to behold this Jesus and to be amazed by this Jesus, but mostly to encounter this Jesus in our lives every day. Each of us has a story to tell about such an encounter, if you think about it. Think about that encounter that you had this summer. Dredge it up, relive it in your mind, and then share it with someone because it was real. Jesus is just a thought away. Look to him for heavenly inspiration. Call upon him for earthly advice. Most of all, allow him to break through any barriers that might be keeping you from turning your life over to him. Let us pray. Almighty God, we humble ourselves today in your presence. We remain empty vessels waiting to be filled with the inspiration that Jesus pours into our lives. Grant us the courage to expect miracles because of his presence here. Amen. Let us prepare for our communion hymn, Gather Us In.
They're at the table right now. There was an image of Jesus inviting us to the table. It was beautiful. This is where Jesus meets us. This is where we can imagine encountering him in person at a table as all our defenses are down and we gather as one family to eat. We do this in remembrance of what he did in the beginning. He gathered with his, with his disciples to share a meal where he took the bread and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body given for you. And then he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, my blood poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Truly, I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Please pray with me. O oh God, we ask you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and to sanctify this bread and this cup to the souls of all those who receive them, that they may eat and drink in remembrance of the body and blood of your Son and be witnesses to you. Amen.
We come now to gather our tithes and offerings. Please give generously. Dear God, we have asked you for our tithes and offerings, and now we ask your blessings on these gifts. Let them be used to further your work in our community and world. You know our hearts, and you know how best to use these gifts. Bless the givers and those who will receive them. In your name we pray. Amen. Let us now prepare for our closing hymn, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. It is in the insert if you want to follow. And during the singing of this hymn, if someone here was inspired to come forward and profess their faith for the first time, maybe through baptism or renew your faith, or uh, simply transfer your membership from another church, come forward to the table while we are singing, and I will meet you there to welcome you.
Let us leave this holy place with this blessing. Christ has touched you and healed you. God's love has restored you. The Spirit goes with you. Go in peace to share the joy of God's love. Amen. Thank you.